Hi, my name is Keith Cooper for North Flight Images and this is one of a series of videos I'll be making uh, looking at this, the Canon Pro 1100 printer. Now in this video I'm going to look at aspects of setting up the printer and I'll include uh, setting up the software, various other bits and pieces as well, but uh, the details will be in a full written review at some point where obviously I can put far more screenshots and various things like that about it. Anyway, here's the printer, 17 inch A2 size printer, takes sheet paper. Now Canon UK have lent me this one to do the testing. Unfortunately it was shipped already initialized. So I have the printer taken out of the box um, and I don't have to take what the first thing you have to do once you've managed to lift it out of the box that is because it's quite heavy, take care, um, is get rid of all the packing materials and orange tape. There's a piece of plastic in the top here. Uh, this is where the uh, print head goes back and forwards. So there's, you take that out, basically look at either the uh, sheet of paper that comes with it, with the instructions. It looks a lot, but actually, because it's in 117 different languages, there's not actually that much on the piece of paper. Now, what you've got, get rid of all the orange tape. Whereas Epson have a warehouse full of blue tape that they slather all over their printers, Canon have a warehouse of orange tape that they seem in a rush to get rid of. Um, but basically, get rid of all of it before you plug anything in, before you do anything. Now, this is an ink cartridge. You're going to have to load the ink cartridges, but you want to switch it on first. So, you don't need to connect it up to a network or anything like that to start with to do the initialization. Uh, basically, you plug it in, switch it on, it will do some things and it will prompt you on the screen for what to do. And that consists effectively of loading all the ink cartridges. Now, the ink cartridges just they're spring loaded, so I'll just take one out here. Um, they are keyed so you can't put them in the wrong cartridge in the wrong hole but do take care don't try and just jam them in uh, they seal when they're taken out so hence i've been out to take this cartridge out and uh, look at it like this and then you just put them in oh, give them a bit of a shake for 20 30 seconds before you do it just to agitate it if they've been sitting about for a while because they're pigment inks and they can settle out anyway we'll pop that back in there this will do its stuff because as I say, it's been partly set up. Uh, the following used ink cartridge was detected. Uh, yes, indeed, it's a yeah, matte black. It's just telling me the cartridge, cartridge that I put in and it's gone. Um, it will go through 10 minutes or so of process of loading up the inks. Now, ink is used up from these initial cartridges. There are little sub tanks in the ink system which need to be filled from those carts and the fluid that's in the lines needs to be flushed through into the maintenance cart. Now the maintenance cart, this is replaceable. Um, this will just set everything up. Once you've got that, follow the instructions on here and it will just tell you what to do. And it's as simple as that. The main bit is you just have to wait for it to do lots of whirring and things. So I don't get to do that because uh, somebody at Canon UK did that for me. So here it is. What do you do next? Now it says the screen here uh, says everything's set and ready to go, but I happen to know that the head hasn't been aligned on this. Now the print heads on this, they're replaceable print heads. You need to run a print head alignment process. Uh, I'm going to do that now. Um, this is something that you have to do. Uh, it's not an optional print quality improvement thing. You have to align the print heads before it can be used before even I can print a nozzle check. Now I'll put some plain paper in here. I'm hoping that this plain paper does for this because I say the the instructions for this are a little sparse at the moment. Now I say at the moment because this is a not for resale demo printer. 
So I'm assuming that when they're shipped out retail versions, they will have a bit more information. But you can go to the Canon, there's a, an address for it, uh, a website, you go to that and it will run you through all the instructions. Worth having a look at that. You can even do it on a phone. It will flash up a QR code. You can look at that and you can do it on your phone. You can do the setup. You do not need a computer to set this up. Although you do need a computer to get the best print results out of it. Forget about making absolute best quality prints if you use iPads, phones, any mobile devices like that. But that's something I'll cover when I do some, some more testing. But anyway, we've got here, I'll go through to the maintenance menu, click on that, Nozzle check is the first one. Now that's one you could run occasionally to check everything's okay. Cleaning, deep cleaning, which obviously you don't really want to do too much of. Uh, roller, and there's loads of other options on here. But what I want is print head alignment. Now I'm going to do this automatically because it's a lot of faffing about to do it manually. There should normally be no reason for you to need to do the print head alignment manually. So I'm just going to click on that. Do you want to start the auto uh, print head alignment, load paper, C manual? I'm just going to, I've already gone to press a non-existent button on the screen. Forget this doesn't have a touch screen on it. So as we nip back into the, there we go. Specify the paper you want to use for the head alignment, page size A4, type plain paper. And this is just ordinary copier paper. So we do that. Load three sheets of the specified paper. Um, I've put a small stack of the paper here, set it its center feed here. Just use the little guides. Don't do it too tight. Uh, one thing I note on printers like this, the temptation is to line things up very precisely. Um, you, I'm not gonna say you want a bit of slack in it, but you just don't want the paper to fold when you just push the the guides in. So we just do that. Okay. Um, prevent paper abrasion has been enabled. Do you want to continue to print? Yes. Now prevent paper abrasion is just a head setting that's used. And normally you would use it. Uh, it's a default, I believe, particularly since I initialized this. Um, I had to initialize this printer because somebody had set a password on it. So I had to do a global reset on it. Anyway, yes. And it says it's going to take about 12 minutes. Lots of noises. Don't worry, I won't. We'll skip through this to what happens next. Well, that's the first sheet of the three printed. And we have a pattern, hopefully that's visible there. We have a pattern of blocks and lines and various things. And this, there is a sensor on the print head, which measures the position of these and a few other things. And that is what is going to decide on the alignment. Incidentally, we've got the second, no, we haven't got the second sheet yet. But anyway, it's still saying 12 minutes. Well, there's the second sheet. Yeah, it still says 12 minutes. So um, and there goes the third sheet going into it. Um, so I guess the whole process is going to take 12 minutes. Novel approach. Normally when you see things like that, you expect it to count down to tell you how long it's taking. But no, all this is is just 12 minutes or so. Well, there we have it. There are three prints done. Um, Still tells me, do not remove the paper. And 12 minutes. Ah, it has completed it. Completed the following print head alignment auto. Now, let's say, if you really want to, you can do this manually. But my experience with printers like this is that manually doing this is, particularly if your eyesight is not particularly fine and I, my close-up eyesight is not brilliant, um, yeah, leave it to the auto. That's an important stage for it. So there we go. Uh, we have those. So I can print OK. 
And just for completeness sake, since I've got some paper in it, I'm just going to do a nozzle check. Do you want to print? Yes. Prevent paper abrasion? Yes. I'm sure we can turn off this warning at some point, but... Uh... Printing. Incidentally, this printer has a vacuum system for holding the paper flat when it's going through it. It's the same as the Pro 1000s. It does mean that the printer is noticeably noisier than say the Canon Pro 200, Pro 300, or some of the small Epson ones than that. This is closer to when I tested the Epson P5300 recently, which is a much bigger printer, does roll and everything, um, and that has fans for a vacuum system in it. It means that if you want a printer like this, if you've got it in your own office, well, you'll know when you're printing, so it won't bother you. I would be more concerned about positioning where to put the printer in a multi-person office because you don't want this printer running on and off during the day if you're sitting somewhere close to it and you're not actually using it at all. Um, it is just a, you can turn down the noise. It will do a quieter mode where I presume it changes the amount that it uh, the amount of energy it puts into the fans if nothing else anyway here we go um i have one nozzle check now all 12 inks it looks fine well i should hope so as well um it tells me it has printed naught pages so far so these are just the basic test it hasn't been used i was right when i, I looked at the printer so i have it there i have the inks have been installed and it's been here. Now, the inks, just as an aside to this, the inks were installed to set it up. I know Canon wanted to check some things out on it, but the inks have been installed and then it was prepared for shipping. Now, in preparing it for shipping, it uses up a lot of ink because it has to empty out those sub tanks. So most of the ink carts here are pretty low. So you can say that perhaps 75%, 80% of the ink has gone into the maintenance tank by shipping it. This is not a printer to move around. If you want a printer that you can put into the back of a van or something like that, uh, take it to events and things like that, this is not the printer for you. You will use up gallons of ink just in setting it up for transport. It's not meant for that. So uh, that's not a criticism of it, but just a warning. If you were looking for a portable printer, this ain't it. Well, apart from the fact it weighs 35 kilos and you know, unless you like lugging stuff like this around. But anyway, I'm now happy that the printer is set up. It's ready to go and um, I would just just tell it that everything looks fine. Yeah, the nozzle is not clogged and does not clogged and does not require cleaning. Thank you very much. Uh, there we go. We we'll go back to that. Now, as I said, this is not a printer for carting about. It's not a portable printer in any means at all. Now, how am I going to drive it? Now, I've there's some Mac software that you can download and Windows software as well. If you go to the um, setup page, online setup page, now I've plugged this into our network, so it's, you know, it's, it's set up, up and going. I just plugged ethernet into the back of it, simple. Wireless setup is also part of the next stage. Go to the Canon site, run the software there. Now, it will invite you to download various things and it will set up and install them. Now, one major caveat for that. This printer, you can run the setup software on Macs, on older Macs, uh, but it will then inform you that, sorry, you can't run this, you can't support this printer on an older Mac. Um, it lets you start the process, lets you do the initialization, but it won't let you install a driver. So let's say you've got a newer Mac system. And now the reason I mention this is because I know quite a lot of people keep old Macs for various things of that. Um, you won't be able to print with this on one of those. Forget using AirPrint. Complete and utter waste of time for any quality printing. 
So I'm going to set this up. I'll follow the instructions on it and it will download and then it will tell me to install a printer. Now, be very careful. This is the equivalent of the famous AirPrint driver problem on Macs. What happens is that you open up a window, uh, there's something, it says select the printer, you let it go, and it shows everything looks fine. You go ahead, it installs, sets the printer up. However, check the printer details and you will find it says AirPrint. Now, what you need to do is delete that AirPrint driver. And I should note that in setting this up on several different computers, I accidentally installed the AirPrint driver twice before I realized what was going on. It's easy to do. Make sure you go to where it says use, which bit of software to use, and select the correct driver. It says Canon Pro 1100 on it. If you let it default, and it seems to go, and you just go, go ahead, it will install the AirPrint driver. Now, um, just an annoyance, uh, but I know people will do it. Um, I'll go so far as, you know, once I've got everything done, I will probably even do a special video that just says how not to install the AirPrint driver. The documentation that is linked from that is a little out of date. Uh, the dialog boxes look different, so just take care with it. Uh, similarly, if you're installing on Windows, just go through, make sure you follow the instructions carefully for it, and then you have a printer that is set up and ready to go. And now I've got this one set up, I've got some profiling to do, various other bits and pieces, and uh, lots of prints to make. Anyway, I hope that was of some interest. Um, if you're watching this um, after I've written the main review, then there will be lots more details in things about stuff like this and also usage, cleaning usage, all the bits and pieces. But if you've got any questions, feel free to email me or add them in the comments. Thanks very much. Bye. Oh, sorry. Yeah, can you like and subscribe to the channel or whatever it is YouTube people say at the end of video, oh, at the start of videos. Anyway, thanks and bye.